Okay, Freelance? Who, who even heard of this movie? Raise your hand if you've heard of this movie. I hadn't heard of this movie. Crazy. John Cena, Allison Brie, Christian Slater. Where did this movie even come from? Find out my review right now. talk about freelance but before we do i just want to give a good shout out to my own kickstarter so i am doing the second book i've been promising the second issue of lords of la my vampire mob set in the 1950s hollywood we have blood we have gore we have sex and we have marilyn monroe what else could you possibly want we got tommy guns all this stuff we got road races all this stuff from the 1950s, and it takes place back and forth between now, uh, between 1950s and 2016. So it goes back and forth in time because they're immortal. Come on. So anyway, we uh, check the uh, QR code below. Uh, just We're going to be launching in a few weeks, but the pre-launch page is up so you can be notified. So when we have this page finally comes up, you can be part of the early bird specials and things like that. So check it out. Do me a favor, click the link below, and get notified about when we launch. So, let's get right into it. I am Frank Zenka. I am an award-winning screenwriter. I also am a working line producer in Hollywood that has now traversed the Kroger country to come to Atlanta, uh, where they shoot Marvel and everything else. However, I came at a completely wrong time because of the strikes and nobody's working at all. So, let's talk about movies instead. Uh, before movies aren't even in theater anymore. There is nothing coming out, which is going to happen. They're going to run the uh, the end of the gambit where nothing's been produced. But this thing, this movie came out of left field. I was buying my tickets for Five Nights at Freddy's, and I saw this trailer come up for uh, Freelance. And I'm like, what is this, John Cena? Alison Brie, who I'm a fan of. I, have, I haven't seen her done anything since Glow. And uh, and then Christian Slater, I'm like, what a cast! Then I found out that the director is the same director that did Taken and Peppermint. And if you haven't seen Peppermint, Peppermint's great, but you ought to be a fan of Jennifer Garner uh, to really enjoy that film because that's a comeback for her. That's a female Punisher, basically. Uh, great film as far as I'm concerned. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I, I liked it because I like Jennifer Garner. And also uh, from Paris from Love, it's a John Travolta film uh, where he plays a badass spy. I mean, I like this guy's work. He knows how to do an action film. Here's the funny part about this, okay? So the director is Pierre uh, Morel, but the writer is Jacob Lentz. Heard of him? Nope. That's because you know how many movies he did prior to this? Zero! Zero! This guy writes for Jimmy Kimmel. That's what this guy's writing talents are. Writing for Jimmy Kimmel. He wrote like 130 episodes of Jimmy Kimmel. Now he's writing an action film with a you know multi-million dollar budget? What happened there? So I have no idea, but chances are that he somehow either is friends with Pierre or hooked up with him somehow and said, hey, I got this action film. And the guy probably read it and said, yeah, there's some potential here. I decided to get some money behind it. And it was, I think it was an independent film, which is why there's barely any marketing for this film at all. I mean, nobody's heard about this thing. And it's got a decent cast. And the only reason I went, because I'm not a big John Cena fan. I think he's good, but I don't think he's great. And uh, I am, I do like Christian Slater, and I do I like Alice and Brie. So I said, okay, well, John Cena, Alice and Brie, and Alice Eve is also in it. Unfortunately, she's relegated nowadays to being the mom or being the wife. That's the only that's the only role she's getting right now. I don't know why she's a decent actress, and I think that she could be an uh, a good uh, action actress also. But she's just not getting those kind of roles because she's you know she's relegated to be a B B actress. So, uh, of course, you know, she's best, probably best known for Star Trek, uh, you know, the second one, which, of course, it wasn't a good film, but, you know, she was good in it. This is an action comedy. It's got a lot of romancing the stone in it, for the most part. 
Um, I do have, I did have a problem with one piece of the writing, but you know, so it gets silly. This is not going to win any awards. It gets silly at times, you know, it, uh, but it's an adventure. It's an adventure movie. It's not boring at all. Uh, it keeps a good pace as far as I'm concerned. So, so, so the very beginning, just as so, I love this director. I love this director. So what he did, so he has this big voiceover of creating John Cena's character. So this is not like a throwaway character piece where the character is just an action guy. He, the director, and I don't know if this was the writing or if Pierre said, you know, I need something here. Can you do a rewrite for me? I, I, that's what I kind of think happened was he kind of liked the script a little bit. And I think that Pierre went in there and said, hey, I, I need you to develop this a little bit more. I need you to develop. I, that's what I think happened, but I, I don't know that for a fact. But that's how it felt to me. So that the that the director had a vision for this film that wasn't originally on paper. And I think that it developed into this. So that, and that's why it, in parts it feels a little off. And like the vision takes a detour at parts that and then you, you let me know if you feel the same way at times uh hopefully you'll see it because again it's a it's a fun film if you just want to go to the movies and have fun then this is the movie okay so it's not exactly linear believe your brain at the door but it's it's kind of like that <laughs> so you know if, if you really want a thought-provoking thing spend three and a half hours watching uh flowers of the of the <laughs> the Scorsese movie, Killers of the Flower Moon. So anyway, uh, and I was surprised that uh, Critical Drinker actually uh, agreed with me on, on a lot of the stuff that he said. But anyway, so going back to, to Freelance. So the beginning is all told by John Cena, right, in voiceover and the point of view. It's a first-person POV through the whole beginning. That hasn't really been done since uh, Bogart, you know, where they changed point of view after the beginning. Uh, I forgot the movie that it was where he, he was wrapped in because uh, they didn't want to show his face in the beginning because he has his face altered uh, in the Bogart film. And that's why. But that that's a really good film. That's the, that's McCall and, and Bogart. You can't beat that shit. So anyway, coming back to this. So he, uh, he, he, got, he was trained to be a lawyer. He went to school to buy a, be a lawyer. I'm just telling you the first couple minutes. So I'm not going to go into spoilers. So not that there is many, so don't worry about that. So uh, he, won, he and he's bored being a lawyer. It's not what he wanted to do. So he ends up joining the Army. So when he was in the Army, he ended up be doing so well in basic training that they uh, recommended him for like black ops uh, type of stuff. And he was sent into a country to assassinate the leader. And while he was paralleling down on the rope, his helicopter was hit uh, by the guy that they, you know, the, the, by the president's guys, his army. And it, as it's crashing, he's, of course, getting dragged by the falling thing and, and hitting the ground and hitting the trees and pretty much everything. So he doesn't make it out unscathed. And that's one of the things I like about this, too, is that they show when somebody gets hit, you know, they did, two seconds later, they're not back to normal. In fact, he has a black and blue mark on his lip throughout almost his entire ending. So anyway, he hurts his back badly where he has to have multiple surgeries. They don't actually go into that. All they show you is the scar that goes throughout his entire back. And I thought that was great. So here we have a guy that's an action hero who can no longer be one. So he's forced to retire and go back and be a lawyer, which he hated. So here you have a, you're, you already have a character Right in the first 10 minutes that you feel for. You're like, holy shit, you're gonna, this movie's going to be surrounding this guy that's got a hurt back? Every time the guy's going to get into a fight, you're going to feel for the guy. And boy, does he play it up. He does not shy away from the whole back injury thing. 
which was great because there's a lot of times when they have an injury or whatever else and halfway through the movie they forget about it. Now, of course, towards the ending they do forget about it, but that's because you're in the middle of battle. I mean, your your adrenaline's going to take over. You know, you're not going to you're not going to be crawling when you're in the middle of battle like that. So anyway, his wife is of course feeling the fact that he's unhappy and then now she's unhappy and they have the cutest daughter in all the world. Um, the way she says daddy is just, you know, amazing. And, you know, he tells, uh, he, he tells her this, he tells her to go beat up the guy that's, uh, trying to kiss her. <laughs> that's either, they're both teasing her and trying to kiss her. He says, no, just punch her in the throat. <laughs> punch the guy in the throat. He's like, well, can I, can I kick him in the penis instead? <laughs> Uh, so they have some cute stuff going on. I really feel bad for him about the fact that his marriage is dis, uh, is, is disinvolving and, uh, and Christian Slater plays like his buddy. And now of course it's a couple of years later after his injury and he comes in and hires him to, uh, be a bodyguard for Allison Bree. Uh, who is a, and again, we don't just go into a normal uh, reporter. She has a background, you know, she has a backstory where she was a really big uh, reporter and she didn't fact check one of her uh, people that, you know, have given her information and ended up that the information was incorrect. So she got a false information charge and she basically lost her entire career. And she was relegated to doing, you know, puff pieces on YouTube, <laughs> you know. So, uh, so we and so now we have this down and out lawyer, <laughs> former, you know, uh, military guy who's protecting her, and at the same time we have this down and out reporter. So you have that's why I'm saying it's more like *Romancing the Stone*, where we have these two. There was there's no romance between them, uh, although. They allude to, well, they don't allude to it. It, it, it tries to happen, but it doesn't. <laughs> so, so you have all this going on and he goes, the, the, who she's interviewing is the president of the guy uh, of the country that shot down their helicopter. So he's almost got to prevent himself from shooting the guy as soon as he meets him and uh because he blames him for all of his whole crew that died his whole team died in that helicopter crash and now he's standing in front of that guy and of all the standouts uh the guy who plays the president uh who hasn't done much in uh film he's done more stuff in television juan pablo raba so he's more of a spanish actor uh, but he did Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff like that. He's done TV stuff here. He was in Narcos also. So the guy's got some credits. But he was a standout here. He took this shit and ran with it. He's like, I'm going to take this role. This role is going to be mine. And he did it. Uh, you know, with Alison Brie, who's a good actress. John Cena's decent. Christian Slater. This guy, though, he outshined them all. When he chewed up. Every piece of scenery, every scene that he was in, he chewed that shit up. So this guy is the villain. This guy is the villain. And you're loving this guy. Who does that? What actor comes in and says, you know what? I'm the villain. But you are going to love me. Every person who sees this film is going to love the shit out of me. And he does. He pulls it off. I love this guy. I was like, man, I hope he doesn't get killed because I like this guy. <laughs> he was smart. He was energetic. He was charismatic. I mean, God, this guy's performance was phenomenal. I mean, over the top, but phenomenal. You, I didn't even mind that it was over the top because this guy was like an over the top character because he played this president and, you know, of the Spanish is it was a made up country, but it was a, you know, a Spanish country and, you know, he embodied some of those other, you know, Spanish leaders, but took it to 
a notch or two higher. And we got car crashes, we got explosions, we got RPGs going off, we got them, you know, Romance in the Stone kind of thing going through the jungle. And that's why I say Romance in the Stone, because it's, you know, them traipsing through the jungle. And you got this guy who's who's kind of attached to them. He keeps saying, go your own way, man. They're trying to kill you. They're trying to kill us. And he keeps coming back. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun with this film. There's other baddies in here that don't have any kind of build up. They're just baddies. This Pierre knows how to direct these kind of things. He took it to the next level with a, with a lot of it. Again, a lot of it was silly. A lot of the, the jokes didn't land. Uh, but I discount some of that stuff because I was just there to have fun. You know, again, we're not going to win any awards here. It's John Cena. He's never going to win an award. But it's, it was good to see Alan, Alison Brie, you know, take on a role uh, like this one. And, uh, you know, and she holds her own in a lot of it. I mean, she was screaming through a lot of it, too. They, you know, they had a whole horseback scene ride that, you know, you could tell some of it was green screen. You could tell a lot of it, you know, that had stunt guys on the thing. Uh, it was what it was. It didn't try to be something it wasn't. So, anyway, I really recommend this film. First of all, being an independent film. Second of all, uh, having this cast. And third of all, this director that I'd really like to support. So anyway, that's uh, that's it for me. If I'm going to give a scale from 1 to 10, I'm going to give this a 7 to a 7.5. It is above average film. It is not a great film. <laughs> it's not a great film by any sense. It's just a fun time at the movies. Okay, so that's it for me. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a middle finger, whatever you like. Uh, but help me grow the channel, so subscribe if you can. And now I'm going to jump into my own stuff. Uh, and again, we're back to Lords of LA. Again, I'm going to put the QR code down here real quick uh, if you feel like signing up for that about when we launch in a few weeks. And I thank you guys so much for uh, helping me grow the channel out. And check out some of my other videos that will appear here. Uh, I do movie reviews and comic reviews, and I'm going to try to get back into some board game playing as well. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. You have a great weekend. Thank you.